Well, like, what have you got the strings doing at that point? And then just play it as it's written. After that, yeah. minor. Oh, we do major, but then on, on the uh, you want to shout it where it was. I think I've always looked at clarinetists, any prominent clarinetists who I've liked, Barney Biggard, Archie Semple, uh, people like that, they always did a, it was sort of the next thing that they could do or something they could do. And I found the Barney Biggard ones over the last three years, I discovered this stuff he did with a ranger called Roger Kay. When I discovered it, it was brilliant, you know, hearing Barney Biggard playing that setup. And I think the setup was with double bass and then string quartet and guitar. And when I heard it, I just went, I've got to do this. I have to do this. Take one. At the end of 2019, I was in Paris and I met an arranger called uh, Philip Manier. And we did some recordings in a, in a studio. We did one of Poor Butterfly and one of Basin Street Blues with strings and with a quartet. And I just thought, I've got to do an album. Like, mm. It's time. I've got to do it. And I want this guy to arrange some of my original music. Mm. And that's what I've done. When you said do it here, I was very, very relieved. Like, you know, the thought of going to somewhere else, you know, one of the, a studio in town or, you know, I can walk in here, I know where every, I know how to make a cup of tea. Do you know what I mean? I know where I'm gonna go, I know where the toilet is, I know where this is, I know, I know my way around, you know. And, and that means a lot to be relaxed in a space. And I was 100% relaxed and felt good. It feels like the place, you know, I feel at home here. So that's good. And playing in here is wonderful. It sounds great. Yeah. What a great space this is, you know, to be able to do that. And all the different things that I've been involved with here is great. And every time I walk in, it looks different, and it, but it always sounds good. And that's one of, you know, it's, I was so pleased when you said, let's do it here, because it, it's so many times you walk into a studio to do something and you blow the clarinet, and it's a dead sound. It's like, ah. Oh. And you can't put that back with reverb? No. No, you can't, because you're, you're getting the immediate effects of me overblowing, trying to create my own sense of reverb. Going, why have I got no sound? Why is that, you know, and people go, oh, it's, oh, it's great to record. Ah, oh, yeah, it's a dead sound. It's really good to record. What, if you want loads of separation from everything? You know, one of the things the drummer, Shaney Forbes, said, and he was talking to some other people saying, I just done this little recording, he said, it's amazing. He said, we all played so quiet. He said, it was so lovely. It's like we didn't have to play with headphones on. It was great. He was like, we all just played so quiet and played to each other and beautiful, sat, you know. And for me, that is, I, I've just, yeah. Well, I, I was so pleased with how everything went. And that should always be strong. Five years ago, none of this was on the radar. None of it at all. Ten years ago, you wouldn't even be thinking like this. But three years ago, wrote a list, you know, in the pandemic. I said, right, this is what I want to do. These are some of the things that I want to happen. This is top of the list. Record an album with strings. Have the strings arranged by Philip Manier. Uh, I want these people in my band, and I want this string section. I want it, and, and I want to record with Rupert. And it's all the things. It, it's like that's that's been done. The best microphone. What what microphone is it? It's a Brauner. Yeah, um, I, I've always said it. It's, from when you used it, you said we've got. From the first time I did something here, you said we've got to use this microphone. And then when I listened back to it, I was like. That is the only microphone that captures, because I feel I have it when I play the clarinet that my sound is very big and yeah. wide. And a lot of the times when a microphone's capturing what I'm doing, it's only capturing this amount of it here. 
Whereas there's so much goes on around it, you know, and if it's not picking that up, then it's missing a lot of me. And when I listen to that, when I listen to anything you've recorded of me, any of the live streams, or especially on this recording, I can hear me, and that makes me happy, you know. Right where Adrian does his pickup at the very beginning. Okay, Never mind, we're going to start eight bars after that, because we only come in on 27. <laughs> Eight bars with no strings, right. only rhythm section, and then the strings start again, and that's where we want to record. I remember when I first said it to you, and you said, well, you could do it here, you could do it there, you could do it there, but strings will record incredibly well in the cove. I remember you saying that, and you were 100% right. <laughs> history between myself and you as friends and in a working capacity we get on very well and I've always said this is whenever I'm around you I'm not blowing smoke but whenever I'm around you I feel that everything I'm doing has a worthy cause it feels like oh it's like yes of course you would be doing this it's not like oh right so what is it you're doing it's like oh right this is what you're doing this is how best to do it and we will do our best to make it as best as it can be and it's all validated and so I come here and I feel I feel relaxed and I feel what I'm doing is warranted in life and that I'm doing the right thing and as best as I can. So that's what I feel when I come here and with everybody here, you know, not just you, everybody involved with Gun Hill. I don't even know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> yes! <laughs> I liked how it was all set up, how everything worked and how you recorded it, you know, going above and beyond building. What did you build? The Decatron? De Decatron, not the Decatron. Deca What's a Decatron? A Decatron, that's a 70s sci-fi movie. <laughs> the sound like, it? Uh, you went above and beyond building the Decatron. <laughs> Thank you.